just a croft, sunnier today. If you look through here, no cars. So it's nearly 12 o'clock and nothing's happening yet because we can't start at croft until the church service has finished at midday. So, me getting changed in here. We've got some milkshake, Dylan's already got us some as well. We've got all the milkshakes, which is good. Kids are watching. She's going to turn away when I'm racing. She won't have any on videos either. So, some other friends are coming as well. So, wish us luck for today. Yesterday were good. I don't know if it's a separate video, but yeah. Good yesterday. Today's a two and a half hour race, two pit stops. Lots going on. We'll see what happens. From CQ. That's all about. Have a good one, Dylan. Have a good one, Scott. Warm them tyres. Yeah, nah, warm up. Uh, Uncle Scott's not doing great right work. Dylan's just trying to find some space. Scott's in V2, behind the green BMW, having been forced. Just want to try and improve.
so it's always a bit hectic. Qualifying is over. Just got picked on last lap. I never managed to get a clear lap in, really. I don't know whether I'm telling dibs or not. But yeah, I don't think I got a clear lap in, or whether I did, I uh, did something silly anyway. Absolutely overcooked it on the way to Sunny. I'm on lap, so scary. But yeah, we need to uh, have a look at the data and see what we can find. Dylan's having a look now, so get the kids fed and then we'll have a look. We'll see. I'm doing that. Like if you look there, zoom in this section. It's just quicker out at corner though if you look, innit? You just lose it and then yeah. yeah, and then that's through so Dylan went through Jim Clark S is actually quicker than me. Well come out of it quicker. Bravery. Seeing how fast it can do a lap. Any like slow. Through, see how fast it goes through chicken. Is that called chicken? <laughs> no. Now we approach the second chicken. This is the cars. One, two, three. Must be one missing again. Four, five, six. The beam are missing somewhere. Have a good one. Have a good one, Scott. Thank you. See you in a bit. Some nice stuff here. Blue Ginetta is the one that was racing last year in the Golf. All right. Hello. Make it on YouTube. Yeah, these are all rested cars. They're all on the way out there. That's the one that qualified ahead of me and he's coming out last, so I don't know what's happened there. I think he might have been disqualified. It's the main event of the weekend here at Croft Circuit, the Tagiwa Club Enduro Championship Round 1. And it's the longest race of the season as well, at 150 minutes in length. The cars are coming up to the grid for this long, long race. And let's have a look at the order in which they're going to start. I'll give you the starting drivers as we go along as well. On pole position, it's the number four car. That's going to be started by Joel Oswick. Besides that, him is number one, which is Scott Parkin, who's driving solo. The second row, number 90, is being started by Alan Henderson. And number six is the car that is going to be started by Dylan Brichter. Chris, we're looking ahead to a 150 minute race here with two mandatory three minute pit stops. And it's going to be a fascinating two and a half hours, I think. It certainly will. Uh, the uh, battle for pole position was uh, certainly very interesting between the JC Racing BMW of James Collins and Joel Oswick. Joel Oswick, of course, being a class champion of a couple of years ago. But Scott Parkin is the reigning overall champion in a brand new Audi TT from Darkside Development, moving on from his Class B Golf uh, car that he ran. Uh, last year, the second of the Audi TTs, which is uh, slightly less sophisticated than the one that Scott uh, Parkin is uh, driving, but his twin brother Ryan in there alongside Dylan uh, Brichter. The safety car is pulling in and the cars are about to thunder into life here at Croft Circuit.
for the opening round of the 2024 Tequila Club Enduro Championship. They're heading towards the line where the lights go out and the race gets underway. And they head off down to Clervo Corner. We've got the car of Scott Parkin on the outside line. And Joel Osbeck on the inside line. And then immediately is Scott Parkin that sweeps around the outside of Clervo Corner to take the lead of the race. There's the number eight car, the Cuffler Frigionetta of Tidmarsh that started on pole position within Class B as well. So we watch out for the class battles as well during the course of this race. But it looks like they're all safely through. As we go on board with Scott Parkin as he turns his way uh, through Barcroft now to Sully, so it's a clear track ahead. We're after that good start, 1.5 seconds in the lead at the end of the first lap. It's great to see this on board footage, Kirk, to see if the dark side development team who do a lot of great productions of their own. Seeing them using that sequential box down through the gears. It's a 2 litre TDI engine, various modifications on his car as well to try and steal a march over his twin for the Ryan, who's uh, not on track at the moment, it's an Umbrichter who started the car that's running in fourth position, uh, number six. But that's got out of that very tight hair in the final corner, and it accelerates away and it's continued to pull out more of a gap over Joel Oswick in second place. What was 1.5 seconds is now 2.4. Fast. That was. That was. Uh, for position, Darren Ball up the inside of Dylan Richter into Clervo for the uh, ninth time, but not quite close enough to be able to make that work. So a tight little battle for fourth place here between the second of the Audis and the first of the Coopers. Yeah, two, uh, two really good battles here going on for second and fourth. Let's see Dylan Richter, he will hand over the car to uh, Ryan Parkin and uh, Ryan managed to finish uh, third in the road sports race yesterday, which is a younger sibling uh, to the Tequila Club Enduro uh, Championship, the mini champion, uh, the mini endurance race at 45 uh, minutes, and that was won by uh, Scott uh, Parkin yesterday. Always oh, uh, Dylan Brickley just dips two wheels, two of those left-hand wheels on the uh, Audi TT into the dirt on the exit of Sunny Out, and that does allow Darren Ball to just close in a little bit more in that uh, TCR Seat. Uh, close but no cigar just yet, but uh, pretty close through the hairpin. Much wider line on the way in for the uh, Seat, hoping to gain a little bit of momentum down the straight. Through the oh, massively on two wheels there was the class leader. I thought for a moment the car was gonna roll over. I'm not quite sure how he got quite that much over. He must have just clipped the curb on the exit of the hairpin, but that's cost him. And oh it has Whoa. cost him because well it's a much more serious issue. The engine has blown up or something has happened there, and Chris Donnie's gonna have to pull off onto the side of the circuit, and there's a lot and of smoke there coming out of the back of that car all of a sudden. Now whether that was connected with the incident he just had, I don't know. But the class leader, as he was very briefly, is out of the race. Oh, oh sorry, Jay. I think something's gone pop. Definitely gone pop. Oh, it's smashing it, isn't it? Dylan's hanging on, isn't it? You should see this mess going on for live streaming. Output here, live, just commentary there, actual live stuff going on. I you got love my it, Tom. Oh. You love it. <laughs>
Coach not happy. His gears are playing up again, that's why. Right. Fifth time this weekend we've had problems with me, but it's not the gearbox apparently. Number one's got parking that leads the way by uh, 10.6 seconds from number four, Joel Osbrick in second place. In third place, number 90, Alan Henson. Fourth is number six, Dylan Richter. I think we have had a change for second place because uh, the number 90 has just gone through on the timing order and uh, yep. trying to look for it out of the commentary box window. They're coming through Hawthorne and into the chicane uh, now as the uh, pit window is now officially open, but Joel Oswick has lost second position. Into the pits comes our race leader, Scott Parkin. So right at the beginning of the pit window, as soon as he could get ahead of the pit stop, he's decided to do so. And he will have to be stationary for three minutes here. And three minutes is very roughly uh, two laps. of that car. Hoods off the number one Scott parking car. I'm not sure how standard that is to take the hood off in your they three minute pit stop. I guess they're trying to keep it as cool as they possibly can. Maybe, they? but uh, so that's an extra job they're giving themselves. They are putting it back on now. I suppose they do have the quick release pins on it, don't yeah. they? So it's yeah. not, a, uh, not a big job, is yeah. it? No, okay. It looks it looks fairly cool, calm oh, and collective down, down there. Very well organised, the dark side team. Well, that is true. <laughs> yeah, Giles Greenbridge there with his stopwatch to uh, Sure, fair play in terms of the amount of time station. We have to be at least three minutes and as the season goes on. Penalties as well for drivers that had success in previous rounds.
fifth of the way oh, through this race. That was an Audi TT from Darkside that it was parked. Yeah, and I can see the marshals going to it now. I don't know if the... It's Scott Parkin! Scott Parkin! He's stranded on the side of the circuit! The man that was leading the race before the pit stops. He's struggling to get into a gear now, isn't he? That's what he's trying to do is wiggling the sequential box. He's managed to... Well, he's found reverse <laughs> or neutral. <laughs> yeah, he's rolling back down and now I've got a safety car out. And that means... While the safety car is out, you cannot make a mandatory pit stop. Wow. It will not count. So sensation here as Scott Parkin, last year's champion, is graduated from the Golf in Class B to the Audi TT in Class A. He was leading quite comfortably before he made an early pit stop, and now he is out of the race. You can see the marshals heading towards him to offer their assistance, carrying the fire extinguisher in case that's needed. But there's the confirmation but the safety car is out. Yellow flags waving all around the circuit. The safety car boards and safety car displays lit up here at Croft. I'm down here with uh, Ty Kinton from Darkside, who's just going to walk us through a little bit about what happened to uh, to the leader. So, uh, Ty, you think it was a sequential box that's gone? Yeah, looking at the onboard video and listening to Scott on the radio, we think the uh, sequential box is gone. We're currently stuck in reverse out on the track. So, unfortunately, that's our day done with that car. Luckily, we've still got Dylan and uh, Ryan in the other car uh, with the normal box in. So, hopefully, we can get a good result with those guys. Scott was roughly 11 seconds in the lead when we lost the box, so we were hopeful for a, a good result today but it's one of them things it's racing there's not a lot we can do about it um, it's a new thing for us this year running the sequential box in that car something Scott's wanted to do with it uh, you know we're running quite a few uh uh, not experimental but new parts to the car and the team on that one so you know it, it's one of the things we we've tried everything we can we tried in the pit stop just there to make sure it was good for scott and he said it felt better on the first first out in the first lap but unfortunately it's something terminal inside the box that w there's there's nothing any of us could have done so it's just one of them things Kids are not bothered about gearboxes and stuff. 28th lap of this Tequila Club Enduro Championship race where we've had drama at Croft. And you can see the number one car of Scott Parkin being hauled onto the recovery truck. That was the car that was leading the race, but we heard from the team a moment ago in the pit lane that uh, the sequential box effectively stuck in reverse out on circuit. Nothing that they could do, nothing Scott could do. And then the reigning champion who was leading quite comfortably before his pit stop I'm afraid, out of the race. Right, safety car in with an hour and 38 minutes left to go, and it's Alan Henderson that leads the way as the, the race gets back underway. That's right, there's only 1.6 seconds now between the BMW of Kevin Clark, which started from the pit lane, and Dylan Brichter, who's in second place in the Audi TT. This is for a third and second position uh, now. 
uh, with uh, Kevin Clark right on the back of Dylan Brichter, getting a fantastic run out of uh, Sunny Out and to the outside of the complex. He's just going to drive straight around the outside of an Audi TT. He is! He is. What a sensational move by Kevin Clark, who now takes second position in this race. Oh, Brichter, I thought was going to have a little look up the inside of the head in there. Uh, but this is a great, great driving by uh, Kevin Clark. And I've just got word in my ear that Scott Parkin's number one car has rejoined the race. There it is. Uh, so, wow. That's quite surprising um, to see. Uh, I mean, he obviously had outside assistance, but uh, they are allowed to, to rejoin the race. And frankly, it's amazing that they've got it going again, considering that car was stuck in reverse gear half an hour ago. Well, Scott's back out. He was at his last pitch stop, so they're not be coming back in again now. Let's see what happens. They'll be coming in soon for me. Currently leading, but a few people behind the pit stop. So. Not, not a win till we've all neutralised that.
was that uh, Scott Parkin? Uh, there's an Audi TT that's just had infill in it. Maybe it'll be Scott, uh, Scott Brichter. Yeah, it is Scott Parkin. So Brichter's yes. still out there on the circuit. And yeah, we can see, as we said, it's an extra oh, session. He's sort of flapping the that was a very uh, no. I know they like flappy paddle gearboxes, but that's not quite the flappy paddle they're after. It looks like the gearbox completely uh, given up. I've never seen a gear stick move like that before. Cable is broken. We're in first gear now. We drive it on truck. Get it out of the sight. Very annoying. Now it's my turn. Into the pits has come the number six Audi TT, our race leader, finally, after an hour and a half almost of running, has uh, come in to, to make his first uh, stop. Um, all calm at Darkside, which it has not been on this in this race so far on the uh, other side of the garage, so to speak. No, well it is now, because the car's retired from the race, so there's not much more they can do. But uh, yeah, it's going to be Ryan Park getting in for the final hour of the race, taking over from uh, Dylan Richter, just getting the car on the jacks. It looks like changing, uh, changing the wheel. Maybe you can see the treaded tyres that they've run on in uh, Club Enduro, so no slips or anything like that. That's steam rather than anything else that's uh, out of yeah. the engine bay. Must be so annoying trying to change the tyre while the car is uh, moving up on the jacks because they don't go up evenly. It goes up one side, then the, the other. Uh, but that, uh, that'll be uh, Ryan Parkin uh, getting aboard the car uh, now. Scott's twin brother. Dylan Brichter and uh, Ryan Parking Car has emerged back onto the racetrack. Yeah, we're we'll perhaps able to hear um, a little bit more from, uh, from Tom or one of the team members at the moment because that did seem like an extraordinary long stop. Yeah, and it's come out, well, it's at, at best ninth, tenth, it's continuing to drop down the order. And we've got another stop to make, of course. Yeah. Uh, like that, um, yeah, it does seem like they were in there for a very, very, very long time and not emerging in a position that we expected uh, them to.
hoods off the number six car again. They, and once again, they don't seem to be in much of a hurry to get that car yeah. back out, do they? It, it, it's feeling like um, it could be a terminal issue again for, for Dark Side here, which would be a great pity. The team's body language doesn't suggest a great deal of urgency uh, about their operations. So I'm just down in the pit lane having a look at the uh, at the dark side developments car, this number six. It it looks fairly terminal at the moment, but uh, yeah, in fact, I've just had the uh, the old cutthroat symbol from the uh, signal from the, uh, from one of the drivers. Who's uh, yeah, it looks pretty terminal here. Uh, they I was told that it was overheating issues that they were having. Um, they went back to try and try and manage uh, the issue. Uh, they were trying to manage the overheating issue. Uh, went back out, did a lap. Uh, it was still uh, the temperature was still going up, and he was trying to manage it with pace and, and clean air and things like that. But it just wasn't working out, so they brought it back in. They're going to try and cool it down. Maybe they'll go back out, but unlikely at the moment. Yeah. Try again. It looks like that is as good. But that cheap head gasket has been as blowing a coolant everywhere. Ah well. Not even watch it in the race. I'm back. Hello. And then in terms of drivers that finished, there weren't many more. 169, Simulite Manson, then Master MX-5. 16th, 171, Osman House and Osman uh, E30 M3. Then it was Deadly Sadler and Ray in 328i in 17th. And the Gibson Rig Dundee Genetta G40, I think, was probably the last of the cars to finish the race. I don't know, we did get the Mayors and Cape car back out again after their exhaust was sorted. So... <laughs>